So, it's a new year, which means only one thing, it's a, it's time for another progress video, right? I guess it's a different kind of progress video, because before this I used to just uh, throw in a few clips, throw some random music on top and just call it a day, right? Well, for this year, as you might have noticed, everything is different, both in the world and in my way of doing stuff. I guess I don't have much to share nowadays. I don't have much to share now because, uh, well, let's say that I did not have much time to work on my personal projects and because of that I don't really have um, another way to, to do a video about this. Just to talk a bit about a few projects I had and how this year has been going with the bad things and the good things I guess. I hope everyone has... Uh, Decent year, I guess. You could say having a decent year is a win nowadays. But uh, anyway, let's start with a few projects that I have here. And this is uh, just one of the more basic ones. Although it's not a weapon, I just tried to, to move up a bit from generic weapons and start uh, looking at other things. Uh, observing them and how they interact with with each other having um, a bit of detail on the seam lines where it gets cut with stuff like this you know a weapon is a rather complex thing and just doing a simple prop is the, the more challenging piece because just by having complexity you you often can mask the lack of detail I'm not saying this is the most detailed part about the whole prop like I think it's a uh, it's a decent, uh, it's a decent piece to learn on, and definitely a bit more in-depth ZBrush ing, I guess you could say. Yeah, I got a bit more into doing ZBrush, the damage pass on the models I make, and adding that that extra little detail that makes them a little bit more believable and more uh, realistic, I could say. But yeah, this piece is, I think. Uh, the first piece? No, it's the second piece I've done this year. The first one was this Sig Sour, which you could see here. It was done in 24th of February. So it's been a long time since then. A long time to learn more. This piece was definitely one of the more challenging ones in terms of complexity, in terms of uh, accuracy of the model. I tried to make it a VR ready weapon. So I needed to have all the details, and I love this kind of stuff, I love doing this. Because having to understand the weapon is something enjoyable, for me at least. It's something I'm looking forward to, just spending the time to get to know the design and the history. As much as you can, I guess, in, in the time frame. But uh, it's definitely a fun experience to just sit down and admire and understand how things interact with each other. I said it's a VR weapon, so yeah, I did a bit of the interior, even though this is not really in a regular VR game. I guess this is not something you would see, but it's definitely something that helped me understand more of, about this weapon, right? You understand how pieces go together and why this is a bit cave, like it's it needs more space for this to move, so this needs to be cut in a certain way, you understand how pieces interact when you do them in 3D. And obviously just a bit of game integration, which I always like to do at the end of a project, and it definitely motivates me to to keep doing this game-ready aspect of a weapon and of a model. Because otherwise I see no point, right? If you just do it for practice and you, you know, it's kind of hard to be motivated to get into... into optimizing a weapon and a mesh and doing it low poly as much as possible. It's something difficult to be motivated to do that when you really don't see the results and you don't really see it in a game. So yeah, this is why I'm always motivated to put these things into my portfolio and have have a showcase of, of a game engine and having uh, having something that actually is from start to finish, not just uh, a render and that's it. 
Uh, this is the most complex project I've done this year. A lot of focus went into making the wood believable, which is why I used the photo base for this model and uh, I tried a lot of, of new things, like just spending time to understand how how this weapon is used and where, where dirt and mud, well not mud on this piece, but you can see right here on the charging handle how, how dirt accumulates behind it and that's not the best uh, render for it to showcase, but I guess it's kinda visible. Yeah, and also a lot of focus when went into the high poly phase. Uh, a bit exaggerated, surely a bit soft for a uh, or the kind of renders I've, I've done for this one. It's more of a game-ready uh, sculpt, which is which means a softer and uh, not so sharp and accurate one-to-one -to, -one to, to a real gun, right? It's a bit softer, so it keeps the edge a bit better in the game. But I definitely went went a step up from, from my previous models and doing details like this on the whole, on the whole gun, having sculpts in in most places here. Like this is this kind of detail here, uh, welding spots and stuff like this, the seams and not being uh, completely even. Just this kind of stuff adds a lot. So yeah, that's what I focused on in, in doing it in, in ZBrush and doing a, a proper damage pass on it. Also focusing again on having a good lighting setup and providing a video in, in this post to show all the work that went into the textures like you take for example a render piece here you can see most of the gun right but then you don't see a lot of detail here a lot of the scratches and roughness variation also here you don't really see it you can see it on this part right but there is a lot more which you can definitely see in a, in a render like this if you see a fingerprint you see a deeper scratch right and again different phases you can see more scratches and more detail here whereas you provide a single image I guess you would need to provide three images which are kind of the same but it's easier to just have them in a video and you go through a lot of the lighting and it shows a lot more of the work you put into it also close-ups as I said it's a bit of a soft edge on the whole model for, a, for, a, for this kind of renders, right? You'd expect for a product visualization to have such a close-up render. But you know, I focused a lot on the textures and I think that even though it's a bit soft, it shows up a lot of the work that went into it and the experience that you get by, by doing a weapon like this is just... you can't... Uh, you can't get that by just uh, doing many pieces of work, right? You do a lot of projects, but you don't focus. You never focus on having this kind of level of detail. So that's a thing that I focused on this year, not having many projects, which I could not really have since I just started working. So this year was full for me with doing work projects and then these three ones, which I was able to do in my free time. Also a cool little trick that I learned this year was uh, you know, learning how materials work and by stamping in a piece you also force another reaction of the metal, right? You stamp something in, something will come out, right? Something needs to come out of the, that space where it was pressed in, right? So that's why you have a bit of a edge which comes up, not goes, it doesn't just go in and that's it. Stuff like this, I think, uh, really add up to making a believable stamp on a piece of metal. And uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff. As I said, the, the, the grunges, how they, they accumu accumulate in the back of the charging handle. I think this is the best, my best, my personal best uh, so far in terms of doing weapons. Also some Blender renders, which you think that Blender is not good enough. Well, it's definitely good enough. And it can make some believable renders. And that makes me really happy to, to, to see that you can do a lot with, with, one, with one project, with one uh, program. 
don't really need a lot of like you could do it in Unreal or something else, but I prefer to just keep it simple, use what I know and just focus on optimizing my, my speed and just I couldn't spend that much time on this project, right? So yeah, it's getting towards the end. Here is the same render, but it's uh, a bit bigger. You can see it, that's uh, it's definitely a, a high-res image and I decided to go to a, to a sort of a scan over it. You can see it in detail a bit more and have details like this just showing up everywhere. But yeah, that's about the, the whole the whole update for this year, I guess. A bit of a different one. So that's from that's it from me this year. I wish you a happy new year and may the 2021 truly be the next year when we grow and we start uh, achieving more and more goals. All right. Cheers.